this morning. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyway. He brought us into a brand new day, a brand new dawning. We are here by his grace. His mercy is in door forever. Your 
children. Let it be our sacrifice of praise to you, Lord. And we give you the glory. We will carefully give you all the honor. We will give you the praise. We will give you our love. God, we will give you our best. And we just want to thank you, Lord, that it is already done. It is in Jesus' name, God, that we praise you and we say amen. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. It's so good to be in the house. How many of y'all are just excited used to be here today? Yeah.
no matter where we are, there is no place where God can't reach us. You have been nowhere where God can't reach you. You have been nowhere where God can't see you. You have been nowhere where God can't hear you. So we're never alone despite the lie and the trickery and the deception of the enemy. You are never alone. Even in the midnight hour. Never alone. Because our God never sleeps. He never slumbers. He never leaves. He never walks away. He doesn't give us his hands up. But in his steadfast love, he is present with us through everything. So the next time you find your place feeling like you are alone, remind yourself that you're not. And tell the enemy he's a liar. Because God does exactly what he promises. Yeah, the 
It's one thing to be baptized in the protest when you're young and your mama say you get up there, Vernon, and you go get baptized. And you're like, no, I don't, don't want to get baptized. But it's in this, this baptism where all older adults who on their own admonition came up and said, you know what? This is an outward expression of an inward change. And I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. And I want to be baptized. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yes. Old things are passed away, everything is new. So during the baptism, we had one uh, that came and we didn't have their certificate. So we want to honor that person today for going forward with their baptism. Yes. And the candidate is Miss Lori Moore. Yes. Thank 
Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Lori. Amen. Amen. Right now, we want to take a moment to welcome our first-time visitors. If we have any first-time visitors in the house, would you please stand? Any first-time visitors? Amen. You would take the time to stand and Amen. let us know Amen. your name. And we'll invite you. I'm sorry, I'm looking at Ms. Ms. Ellen Mason. Raisin. Raisin. I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. And my sister and brother here, Charlie Lester. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And who we'll invited you? How did you hear about us? Hold on. Hold on. One, one person didn't say what their name was, and I know who he is, but I need to hear his voice. Amen. There you go. Amen. And we also have my brother in the back as well. Amen. Andre Reed. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we here at Portugal Ministries. We want to welcome you. We thank God for you. We thank you that you're here worshiping with us today as you're supporting. Our beloved sister, Sister Tammy, I call her minister, Sister Tammy. Amen. And we just want to say, when you first come, you are, uh, you know, guests. But as you come over and over again, you are part of the family. So Amen. welcome into the family. Amen. Is there any other visitors? Did I leave anyone out? No? Well, yes. My sister over here, to my right. first time, the right here was my niece, Maya. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're glad to have you here with us today. So Perfect World Ministries, if we can do our vision statement right now, we are contemporary but not compromised. We envision and experience a diverse, multi-culturing, worshiping community of spiritually mature believers, leading others into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, producing healthy families, engaged in holistic ministries to develop the community spiritually and economically, and the back in the world for the, for the glory, glory of God. God. And here at Perfect World Ministries, we say, don't give up. Don't ever give up. You can't. We. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who is strength in us. Amen? Amen. Amen. And guess what? We've already won. Amen? Amen. Amen. We've already won. So we also want to continue in our spirit of worship as at this time it is our time for giving. How many chair forgivers do we have in the house today? That God loves the what? Cheerful giving. And he gives seed to the host, Soul. to the sower. So right now we'll ask if our watchman will pass out some envelopes. Um, if you could just raise your hand up and he will get an envelope to you. And if you want to still put in the mail, you know, some of us still mail in our envelopes. It is P.O. Box 823, Bear, Delaware, 19701. You can also do it by that. You can also go on social media. It's at perfectworldministries.org if you want to pay by social media. So we thank God for just allowing us to be able to give because we know that when we give, it's going into fertile ground. It's yes. going into the kingdom of yes. God. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, how many of y'all came ready and expecting to hear the word? Amen. Anybody hungry? It's one thing to be thirsty. Was well, anybody hungry today? Anybody ready to eat? Yes, yes. You have to come in with an expectation. Appetizers is okay. We can get full. But it's something about that meal when it comes in that it just fills you up that you just want to take a nap after it's all good because it's just so good. So if you come in with an expectation, God will yes. meet you right where yes. you are. Yes. He will fill you up. You don't have to worry about being thirsty or just having an appetizer, but he'll give you the full course meal. So right now, I want to take an opportunity to just as we're preparing our hearts and our minds to receive the word, to just... Uh, just acknowledge the minister that's coming up today. Amen. Her name is Sister Tammy. Amen. I thank God for her. I had the pleasure of meeting her over several years ago at a women's meeting. And I remember her making a cherry cheesecake. And I never forgot it. And she's still making cherry cheesecake. So even today, she brought some in. So right after service, you won't miss out on the dessert. Amen. So can we just give her a warm welcome? <laughs> good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. So good morning. <laughs> um, I do want to thank the pastors for allowing me to be up here. Um, I am very nervous, but we're gonna get it done. So yes, ma'am. Um, let us pray. 
Lord, I thank you and I praise you. I will glorify you and I honor you, Lord, for this day, for everyone that has shown up, Lord. I thank you for those who are on social media watching. I thank you, Lord, that you are a mighty, awesome, wonderful God. And there's nothing that comes to a surprise to you. It may be a surprise to us, but it's not to you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are holy and you're righteous, and you will never give us more than we can handle. You will never give us more than we can tolerate, Lord. But you're right there with us, guiding us, directing us, and leading us. And I ask, Lord, now that I decrease yes, completely, yes. and that Holy Spirit will take over. Amen. Holy Spirit, have your way. Say what you would have me to say, and nothing more, nothing less. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, so, <laughs> amen again. <laughs> so, I'm going to give it to you the way God gave it to me. Um, when Pastor asked me, well, we were on a Zoom church, and he said he heard from God. Amen. And I typed back, I accept, no matter what it is. Well, my mom went one way, his went another. <laughs> and I'm up here before you. Ah, <laughs> come on, man. Amen. So, in that, I had a whole bunch of questions, and as Pastor Casey knows, I can wear God out. But in the process of that, he gave me, I asked him a question, which I don't remember what it is now. Um, but he gave me a question back. And it was, believe, faith, trust. Where do you stand? Yes. So, he, believe, faith, trust. Where do you stand? So, I, again, went my head another direction, and he went his way. So the scripture that comes from is Ecclesiastes 4.12. And I'm reading it out of the New International. And it says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands yes. is not easily, not easily broken. broken. That's right. So when we've heard that sermon before, it's come in many different forms. But what he told me was, was that believe, Believe in the Father. Yeah. He is the only true living God, creator of all. Have faith in Jesus yeah. that what he accomplished on the cross leaves no doubt about your salvation and that you have access to the Father. Yeah. Trust in the Holy Spirit to guide and direct you in your relationship with the Father. So that is the three strand cord that he gave me. So if we go back and believe in believing, and I'll give you the definition. It is to be firm, faithful, true, to have faith, credit, and trust, and conviction. Faith is belief, trust, with one implication of action based on that trust may follow. Trust, to be firm, true, be confident, or sure. Confide in, to be patient, hope, will fortify, to rely on, by inward certainty, shelter, refuge, security. And if you look at them all, they all have intertwined. One of them says, you believe, faith has belief in it, trust has to be firm, believe, and have faith. So they're all intertwined. You can't have one without the other. You can't have God without having Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You can't have the Holy Spirit without having God and Jesus. Amen. They're all intertwined. You can't get one from the other. You can't separate them. You can't deviate from one. If you're going to have one, truly have one, you got to have them all. Come on. You can't be partial in one and not really trust in the other. They're all intertwined. And that was kind of shocking to me because I never really thought of it that way. Um, but again, it makes you think, where do you stand? Do you just believe that there's a creator uh -huh. and don't believe in the Holy Spirit? Uh -huh. Do you believe there's a Holy Spirit, but you don't believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins? Where do you stand? Right, right, right. All right, man. Where do you stand? So when I was researching this and studying out the scriptures, I noted believe or belief. 
and trust had more scripture references. Yes. Um, and I went to several different books, went online, um, and it still came up that belief and trust had more scripture references than faith. So that made me think. And question again to the Lord, why? <laughs> and I had to sit and ponder it. But what I got from his teaching was, was that you can believe, and that's something God puts in, uh, puts in you. You already have a mustard seed of faith. So if you have that mustard seed of faith, and you know that mustard seed of faith is there, then you believe in God. If you believe him, he teaches you how to trust him. But faith, that's you. That's your work. That's right. He's not going to give it to you. You got to work that one out yourself. That's right. And I look at that and I'm like, but why? <laughs> and I'm sorry because there's a whole lot of questions in the scripture. That's right. <laughs> but that's my conversation with God. I need Amen. to know. Amen. Um, if I don't know, I need to ask him why so he can teach me how, he can tell me what it is. Or he, as he did this time, we work it out together. Amen. But faith is a work that you have to do yourself. He can guide you toward it. He can encourage you. You have other people that can encourage you. But nobody can give you faith. That's something you have to work yourself. Yes. He said, I can teach you how to believe on me as I teach you to believe with increase your trust. Will increase your trust in me. But faith is something you have to work, and it doesn't look the same for everybody. Amen. That is your part of the court. You cannot have one without the other. Others be able to effectively produce in the kingdom of God. The same way when you are born as a baby or a newborn, you rely on your parents to supply all your needs. You don't know what is what. You just know you're hungry and you don't wet yourself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I need to be dry. That's right. Amen. There's no different when we start out in the kingdom of God. He's there with us. He guides us. He directs us. But at some point, a baby starts to figure out my limbs move. All right. And then they want to crawl. Right. And once they figure how to roll over, then they know they can crawl. Once they figure they crawl, they can get up and walk. Then they don't want to bite hand. I want to do what I want to do, how I want to do it. The way I want to do it. That's right. Yeah. It's no different than God. Okay. He got to teach you how to go. And once you get to that point, it's your work. Mm -hmm. That's right. When you fall, he's going to pick you back up. Well. Yeah. When you go the wrong that direction, he's going to turn you around. You may not like how I feel, but he's going to turn you around. Yes. When you say, I don't want to do it and I do something, just like your parents thank you, you're going to get a spanking. Amen. Some of us, we got hit a lot. <laughs> Some of us, not so much. <laughs> but he's still going to make sure that you stay on the path. And it's your decision and choice to stay there. Yeah. And as you get a certain age, again, it's your choice. Yeah. But he's going to always be there with that three-strand cord. Yeah. That you can either hold on or you can let go. God teaches us by past histories how to believe in him, by his actions and demonstrations of love. That's right. As we continue on our journey, we begin to trust his word. Yes. But what happens when we want something that God tests us on? As long as our prayers are being met by what we think we want or need, there is no faith at work. But what happens when that thing doesn't come right away? Well... Come on. What happens? Come on. Faith has, has to work just as a baby works at trying to roll over. Do you still believe? Do you still trust? Is your belief and trust system still strong? Mm. As it was when you were getting everything you thought you wanted? Or does it become, begin to deflate? Do you start to question everything? How long does it take for that to happen? 
one month, one week. For some of us, one day. For Jesus. some of us, one hour. How strong is your core? My God. And if your faith starts to erode, how long do you think it will be before your trust and belief in God will be lost? Can't have one without the other. My God. We start to question our belief in God. We start to question our trust. And we start to question our faith. Each one is intertwined with the other, the threefold cord. You begin to compromise, and if you begin to compromise in any one of the ways, that compromise will cause your foundation to crack. Can't compromise. Got to have it all or none. We can't have cracks because that causes weak links. And if you have a weak link, how strong is your weak link? Jesus. It is time to be honest. Yes, yes. With ourselves and honest with God. He already knows yes, yes, where you stand. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He already knows it. But the question is, do you know? Do you know? Uh -huh. Where do you stand in your threefold core? Believe, trust. And faith. What are the areas you are lacking in and need strengthening? God always knows he wants us to be aware. God already knows he wants us to be aware and stop getting in his way when circumstances and situations come to help you strengthen those areas in your life. We try to get out of them. He's trying to show us what we need. He's trying to teach us this is where you need to be strengthened but then he's trying to stop it. How you gonna get strengthened? If you keep asking to stop, then you gonna get stuck. It's not always the devil who's doing what's going on. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's not always the devil. Sometimes God is trying to get your attention and say, here where you need to be strengthened. Here is where you lack it. We gonna say no, it's the devil. I rebuke the devil. I rebuke the devil. Uh -huh. You don't even know what you're rebuking. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> what do you say? A rich and abundant life is what God wants to get you to. That's right. It is time to elevate your relationship with the Father. Jesus. Yes. It is time Jesus. to elevate your relationship with the Father. Yes. Yes. You can't have one foot on the second step and one foot on the fourth step. You're imbalanced. You're off. What areas in your life do you need to strengthen? And if you are on solid foundation, foundation then go help somebody else. There you go. There you go. If you got it together, praise God. There you go. Praise God. If you got it together, but then go help somebody else that don't have it together. I don't have it together. I'm quickly to say I don't have it together. That's right. And studying this, God showed me some areas, which I kind of sort of knew, but he put it in my face. I looked on the side, but he put it in my face. This one was a long time coming. But make sure if you have it together, go help somebody else. Yes, God. Because we're a community in Christ. Amen. Come on. And a community does not mean one person. Well, a community doesn't mean three people. It doesn't mean your family. A community is a community. And how can you be good if somebody else is hurting? My God. And say, okay. But I'm living large. It's not God. Lastly, and I'm almost done. Take your time. <laughs> Take your time. I like it. Yeah. Come on, tell it. God said it is time to elevate your thinking. Uh oh. Yes. Uh oh. It is time to elevate your belief in Him. All right. Your faith in Jesus and what He did, and your trust Jesus. in Holy Spirit. 
this time. It is. Everybody wants to be elevated. Come it's on. What I thought. But how you gonna get elevated? You still sitting on the floor. Jesus. <laughs> how do you expect God to answer your prayers for increase when your belief is lacking? Mm. God says, if I gave you everything you asked for, yeah. how would you handle it? Uh -oh. Everybody want to be rich, everybody want money. But if you can't handle money down, you ain't going to handle money then. Yeah. You need that car, you want so badly. But if you don't know how to take care of it, how you going to keep it? Jesus. That's right. We want what we want, but God says, not yet. He never said no. But he said, not yet. not yet. And I think of my own self, the things I asked God for, and I praise God that I didn't get two thirds of them. Yes. I don't even want it. Because I know it was what I wanted and not what God had for me. It's so Jesus. much greater, so much better. So you have to do your rethinking. You have to understand where you're at in your, your threefold course. You have to understand that you can't have one or one. And you over here, I'm strong in trust. But how are you strong in trust if you can't believe the word of God? My God. Come on down. How do you have faith when you do everything you need to do yourself? Jesus. Can't happen. Can't happen. God says elevate your thinking. Elevate your behavior. Elevate your discipline to follow me. That's what he gave me. You can't dance between the new and the old. You got to make a choice today. Jesus. You got to decide which side you're going to be on, and you got to step into it. If you want to be elevated, you beg it, you holding your own self back. It ain't nobody else. God wants to give it to you. But you the one sitting there holding it up. And you want to get married by us. And talk about it by us. God said no longer. No longer. This is the year for elevation. Well. But whether you get elevated or not. Is up to you. Yes sir. Yes sir. So that's what God gave me. And I'm done. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. I honor you and I glorify you. Because yes. you are the only true living God. Yes. And everything you give us is for our growth. Yes. And I ask and pray, Lord, right now, that everything I said will be because you told me to say it. It has nothing to do with me, and I had to learn it as well. I ask that people hear what you're saying, God. Research their own selves, Lord, yes. and come to you for the answer. Yes. Yes. Help us, Lord, to be elevated according to your will and not our own. Help us to understand where we're lacking in and what we need strength in. Help us to see you in the midst of every circumstance, every situation, every problem, every issue. Yes, you are in the midst of it. Yes. Help us to grow, Lord, so that we may grow in you and those things that bother us now will no longer bother us. And then we can go pick somebody else up. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. We need that community link, Lord. We need that community together. Yes, God. We need each other to strengthen each other, Lord. Yes. And just as you have strengthened us, Lord, we go out to strengthen others. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand praise. Let's give God a hand praise. Excellent job. Sit right over there with the presentation. She's going to pray with you and cover you. Um, let's give God a hand praise for Minister Teddy. This is, this is what is known here at Perfect World Ministries as a trial sermon or initial sermon, but it ain't really no trial sermon, initial sermon, because Minister Teddy done preached a whole bunch of times, a whole bunch of places uh, in our presence, and it's not a, a trial or initial because she's done it. So, but I heard, the, I heard God say to just um, Say well done, thy good and faithful servant. Excellent job today. Excellent job today. Uh, last night I came home late, and as I pulled into the to the garage, uh, I 
I went to go to the garage and I looked up on the garage and I saw a frog jumping up on the garage and I said, what the heck? And one of the things when she was preaching, belief, trust, faith, where do you stand? I called Minister Tammy earlier in the week and I said, well, what is a title? She gave me the title, but please understand that every word means something. Every single word in that title means something. And she gave you about belief, trust, and faith. And, and she asked you the question, if you're not being elevated yet, everybody wants to be elevated, but then you gotta do an introspective look. Are you doing everything that you're supposed to be doing to be elevated? And then when adversity comes to your house, can you still believe? And can you still trust? And will you stay? So there's some things that God wants us to do. So don't get mad at God when you're not getting elevated. Again, do what she asked you to do. I'm going to show you this real quick. I'm going to get you out of your way, but I need somebody to help me. Mackenzie, come on up here, my baby. My, my baby girl, come on up here. Mackenzie, I'm going to show you exactly what... I'm going to show you exactly what that sermon was. Belief. Somebody say belief. Belief. Faith. Faith. Trust. Trust. Where will you stand? Key word is stand. So yeah, you might believe. You might have faith. You might trust. So there, there, there's a story of me and McKenzie. Two frogs just hanging out. This is my young frog. She, she, she's my energizer. She keeps me going. I'm an old man. She's a young lady. So we out hanging out on the farm one day, the industrial farm. And you know the big tanks that you have out there that they put all kind of like liquids and milk or whatever? Me and Mackenzie just hopping around like on that garage. And all of a sudden, me and Mackenzie kind of misstep one step and we go to hop over one of those industrial tanks. And we actually fall into a tank of milk. So probably about as, as high as this room from the ceiling to the floor, probably as wide as this room. And all of a sudden, I look at McKenzie and I go, McKenzie, I don't know if I'm gonna make it out. McKenzie said, Pastor, what you talking about? You got belief, you got faith, you got trust, we gonna make it out. And all of a sudden, we just start, start doing that, that little stroke and we start treading, treading up. Go ahead, come on, me and McKenzie, treading up, right? And all of a sudden, I'm good and I'm looking at McKenzie, she said, Pastor, we got this. And all of a sudden, now an old man, I'm getting tired. I said, Mackenzie, I'm, I'm getting tired, Mackenzie. I don't know if I'm going to make this. She said, no, Pastor, you're going to make this. You keep treading. I'm going, Mackenzie, I got belief. And I trust God. But I'm looking at my condition. I'm old. I don't know I got the faith to make it. And all of a sudden, Mackenzie said, Pastor, you can't give up. Keep treading. And all of a sudden, because I don't have the faith, I stop. And all of a sudden, I drown, and I'm gone, and I'm out of the picture. When you're facing adversity, and that very person that keeps you going is gone, that very thing that keeps you going is gone, will you keep treading? Will you keep pushing? Well, because I disappeared and drowned, McKenzie said, oh, heck no. So the kids, she start training harder. She start going faster. And she start going faster. And she start thinking about me. And all of a sudden, the milk turns into butter. And McKenzie walks out. I'm saying to you, belief, faith, and trust. You got to have all of them, even when you can't see it. The last word she said, where do you, will you stand? You ain't going to drown. You're not going to fall. Because the Bible says that God will, 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 will never test you beyond what you can bear. But he will always make a way of escape so that you can stand on it. So Minister Tammy, I thank you for your word today. Mackenzie, thank you because that illustration preached us a thousand sermons. Somebody right now is in a pickle and, 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 it's, and it's hard and you can't see your way out. You don't have to see your way out. God said, I, I know the plans I have for you. Amen. Right? Success. Good and not evil. Get you to an expected end. So again, keep churning. Yeah. 
Keep shredding. And when you get tired, Kelvin, get your second breath. Uh, say, Quan, you know we got that second breath, didn't we? When we was playing sports, all of a sudden you feel like you're tired, and that second breath kick in, and all of a sudden you become stronger. I encourage you today to have belief, to have faith, and to have trust, because that is the three course training. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is always tight. And will always make a way of escape. Let's give God a hand, praise. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Make sure that as we dismiss here, make sure you just let Minister Tacey, oh, Minister Tacey, Minister Tammy, let her know that you're proud of her. Because I know we are. We are. Come along with us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that on this Sunday, September the 11th, hold on, open up your eyes real quick. Y'all hear what I just said? This is 9-11. See, some of the world has forgotten all of the sacrifices and what happened 22 years ago. But I was there. And while the world may forget, those first responders and those law enforcement personnel, fire personnel, or that we'll never forget. So while the world may not say anything about 9-11 today, I want to take a moment to remember those who lost their life on 9-11 at Ground Zero, and those first responders who responded, and those survivors who still have to live with this. So let's take a moment of silence very quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we remember 9-11. And we thank you, Lord God, that you've allowed us to make it over. We ask right now that you would bless every survivor. We ask that you would bless all families who have suffered loss as a result. We ask God that you would, what you said in your word, send down your comforter to give them comfort each and every day. And for us today, Lord God, as this is September 11th, 9 is harvest. And we know we got to keep on churning and we got to keep on kicking, God, because you will give us the harvest. You said you, we would reap the harvest and we would not faint. And so we know right around the corner is October, which is the 10th month, 10th month, which is test. So God, we ask right now that you would just prepare us for the test. We thank you for Minister Tammy and that awesome word, belief, faith, trust. Where do you stand? Allow us to make a declarative stance right now, God, that we will stand for you no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation. We will always have our hope in you. So God, as we leave this place today, bless each and every one of us, those who have come near and those who have come far to support this mighty moment of God. We ask that you would just continue to bless us, keep us, sustain us, and maintain us as only you can. Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Give God a hand break. You are dismissed. Pastor, please be back. Uh, my Good afternoon.